guys, Mike, the host of Crushing Your Fear. How's your fear doing today? We have Aaron Younger on the podcast. I know him through Apex, and uh, we did doing a couple things together. Um, I went to his house. He had a barbecue. <laughs> and we want to try to do yes. some more events in the tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. And uh, Aaron, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank God everything is going well. Um, it's good to be on here. Uh, excited to talk to you again. Yeah. Don't get to see go don't get to see you often enough. So I know. We gotta figure out some more uh more things. You were gone uh away when we had the last event in New Jersey, but uh we gotta try to figure out some some new events coming fo- going forward. It's the beginning of the year, so uh we got the year ahead yeah. of us. Uh, but I wanted to have you on. You you went through um, a couple of divorces. And I mean, this is something that I'm focusing in now with, with dads, you know, like focusing in on trying to help dads out because um, there's a lot of stuff that goes through kind of a man's mind. And, you know, he gets married and then he might get divorced and or he has a business. And, you know, he's worried about the family, the kids, and then they get a divorce. And how do how do you move forward from there? So you've gone through a lot of that too. I, I mean, I went through a lot of it, and that's one of, one of the reasons why I started this whole podcast, crushing your fear. A lot of fear, fear that arises, you know, in in a dad, and especially when you have kids involved. So uh, take us through your 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 divorce, and um, you know, I guess that you can. I think you got married twice, or yeah. yeah. So maybe we so can kind of uh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. I divorced in uh, 2013. We separated. Um, I have four kids from uh, uh, my then wife um, and got remarried. Um, I got divorced. So, you know, the legal system took like two years. And then um, I got remarried back in October of 2020 uh, to a nice woman who had four kids of her own. Um, we tried blending and you know, combining the households and that didn't work out with the kids, but she's a great person. Um, but we uh, ended up uh, getting divorced again because just the, the blending was not a good situation. Um, so I am uh, re-divorced again, but I still have uh, my four kids and uh, I live pretty local to my uh, first ex, the kid's mom. And they come back and forth and uh, have them, you know, pretty regular. So that's, that's a blessing to be there and have them. So you, had a, you, have, you still have a good relationship with the first wife, um, ex-wife, sorry. And um, um, I really have not. I mean, she's remarried. I don't have much to do with her at all. But for the kids, like, we'll talk and communicate about the kids. And, right. You know, she never blocked. she never blocked access. I know that's a big problem for some people. Um, so we never had that issue as we always put the kids first and they grew up knowing they had two parents that were there for them. So it was a, uh, you know, not ideal situation, but it was, we made it ideal as we could for them. But at least you're on, you know, at least you're on some, some amicable terms where you can kind of do this. And a lot of, you know, women or a lot of men, um, you know, block their spouse from seeing kids or make it very difficult or kind of create these scenarios. And a lot of guys go through this. A lot of women Correct. go through this I as well. Friend, yeah. yeah. I have friends that, you know, don't have access to their kids or very, very, uh, you know, slim access or, you know, supervised visits for absolutely no reason. So it's, uh, you know, I am lucky in that regards. And it took a lot of work because, you know, you divorce for a reason. So, you know, it's, you have to rise above that and, uh, you know, basically, you know, realize that your kids are your kids and put yourself, you know, remove yourself from the situation so that your kids can grow and be healthy. And I think that's the focus and that a lot of parents forget that. I mean, you have kids involved, you know, you want to try, I mean, you don't have the relationship anymore. It's not, you know, one big happy family. Uh, but still the kids have to grow up and they want to see that, you know, that you got to give them the environment that they need in order to, right. Kind so you, of need, you need to have two happy, fa- you need to have two happy families, not one happy right. family and another miserable family. So you need to make sure that if you are divorced that, and there's two separate households, they both need to be happy. And it takes a lot of work. It's a lot of effort. Not, uh, it's not easy. You know, if you want to talk about crushing your fears, 
you know, you really got to set aside your differences and, you know, make them indifferences for your kids. So you got to swallow a lot and, you know, just say, okay, what, what, would, what is the best interest of the kids? And, you know, thank God my kids are thriving and doing great. And, you know, really like you look at them and they're like, you know, happy, healthy, go lucky kids without a care in the world, you know, for that type of stuff. You know, they're never pawns in, in the middle of a, a divorce. No, that's horrible when you use the kids as like pawns, uh, you know, to, it, there's a lot of emotions and a lot of, you know, anger and resentment. And, you know, once you get the kids involved and, and use them in that manner, that just doesn't help anybody. It just, it's like fuel for the fire. It's like throwing gasoline on a fire. Yeah, you get the, the yeah. legal system involved and lawyers involved and it's just a big, you know, a mess, a mess. Yeah, thank God we were able to deal with mediators and, you know, we only ended up in the court system at the end just to get it stamped, you know, and the lawyers wrote it up, um, you know, but we were able to use mediation and able to make it work. So, you know, I always pat myself on the back for that and, you know, my ex as well for being able to put the kids first. So, Well, that's good. You're very easy. fortunate. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I, I mean, I move, I move closer to the kids now and, you know, I'm trying to uh, manage, you know, time with them. And then also, you know, the ex-wife has the kids, but we're kind of working together to make sure that the kids get the, the best opportunities they have. You know, I mean, they're younger kids. They're like, uh, you know, 16, 14 and 10, you know, and they're all yeah. girls. So they're all going through that, that stage where, you know, it's a very important stage for them, you know, to, to, to kind of excel in school and set them up for a good uh, future. Like what, what are your, what are your kids? Like how old are they? Um, I got twins that are boys that are 18. I have a daughter that's 12 and a son that's nine. Yeah. You're about the same age, you know? So this is a, this is a very crucial part. <laughs> of yeah, and you got, you got, you got three of them that are going to wrap themselves around your pinky. You know, I only <laughs> got one that. Wraps, you know? <laughs> no, they wrap me around their pinky. This is the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I only have one girl, you know, she knows how to do it, but, uh, you know, you got three. I don't know. I how got three. I, I know. I know. I'm not retiring. There's no way I, I, can, I forget about this. It's done in my vocabulary. Yeah. So we got the three weddings, the three, uh, colleges and you know, the, the older one is, is, is looking at colleges now and it's like, Oh, geez. So she's freaking out, but, um, you know, we're going to make it happen. Whatever, whatever she wants to do, you know, we'll make sure she gets, uh, gets to where she needs to be and, does whatever she wants to do and kind of support them in, in their journey. Right. Um, and that's what, that's what parents have to, you know, think and just, you know, it's the kids, you know, make sure your kids, you know, your relationship didn't work out. That's okay. You know, um, you know, it, that is correct. things you happen. Know, yes. it, you know, right. Exactly. You know, if it don't work out with the mom or the dad, whichever way you want to look at it and just, you know, what you created these kids, you got to take care of them. And that, do not ever, ever, ever use them as pawns. You'll just destroy them. You're not destroying your spouse. You're destroying your kid or your ex-spouse. You're destroying your kids. Oh, yeah. It's a very, you know, you don't want to want them to have that, that you know, that trauma growing up. I mean, parents, sometimes parents don't care. They don't care. They use them as pawns and it's not the way to do it. Look, you're responsible. Like you just said, you have the kids it's take ownership of your half make sure you know make sure their 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 mother is well off and as much as you can because they it's their mother you know yeah i mean and, i have friends on both sides male and female that you know like oh my gosh she didn't show up on time or she didn't return them on time or whatever let me call the police and the, the kids see the police there and it's like for what for what why why are you hurting your kids you know, yeah you're not hurting the spouse yes you may be hurting the spouse but you're not you know, the, the, part, the other, the ex, the ex spouse, you know, the parent, but you're hurting the kids, you know, they don't need to see, you know, a police car at the house that because you came, you returned them five minutes late or whatever it is. Like, seriously, it just, yeah. I mean, there's so many cases that I've seen and I have a lot of friends, you know, involved in these stuff and it's just, it just really, it makes me upset. Like, like these are your kids. Like, what are you doing? Exactly. Exactly. You don't want to get the police involved. You don't want, you want to try to have minimal legal um, involvement as well and just work on, work on yourselves and, and, and just, you know, figure it out. You know, stuff happens yeah. five minutes late. I mean, give me a break, please. You know, but yep. um, 
And what was interesting is you tried to do that again with, with a woman who had four kids, like eight is enough, right? Here we go. You got eight kids and you were trying to get them together, I guess. What happened there? Yeah, trying to move together. And uh, she was supposed to move to me in New Jersey and, uh, you know, the schooling and stuff. And the kids weren't uh, doing, uh, you know, it wouldn't, it would not have been the right fit for them there. And then the commuting back and forth. And it just, it was just too much to, to make it happen. Oh, boy. So, so you were in New you Jersey. Know, Where was she? Uh, New York, Brooklyn. Oh, jeez. All right. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, as the crow flies, it's, what, 17 miles? But welcome to uh, the bridges and tunnels in Manhattan in between. So no. that can take you anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half. So, uh, 45 minutes is like at 2 in the morning when they're not, not doing construction. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I lived in Westchester, so that was my situation. I was up in Westchester, and then I had them every other weekend. And it was the same thing. It's like, you know, if I were left at two in the morning, I'd get there in 45 minutes. But if I left at, uh, you know, four in the afternoon, it would take me literally like four, two hours, like one way yeah. on a good day, <laughs> you know, to get yeah, there. So I was and, doing the commute. Yeah. So I was doing the commute because uh, my kids were in school in New Jersey and her kids were in school in Brooklyn. Um, so I was doing the commute, you know, when I had my kids, my, my, night, my evenings and nights with the kids i would stay in new jersey and then you know the rest of the week i would be you know going back and forth to brooklyn and my office and warehouses in new jersey near where i where i live so i was commuting back and forth and it was just uh you know and weren't able to blend the kids together so it was just uh, way too overwhelming and not able to make it happen so you know we don't really keep in touch that much, you know, here and there, you know, she's a good person. It's just, you know, it's just hard to, you know, when you can't be together. So you just have to move along. Right. Well, you had the best of intentions. It just didn't work out. So, you know, and I know I, I yeah. met her as There's well. No, zero, anim yeah. zero, zero animosity. Yeah. Yeah. No, I met her. I met her as well. She's a great person. So, um, you know, um, yeah. Stuff stuff happens or it doesn't happen, I guess, you know, so you just got to keep moving, moving forward. Uh, but you're mentioning in New Jersey, you had your warehouse. So you have a business as well, uh, which. Yeah, you, uh, we, we, distri we, di we distribute uh, toiletries, personal care products. So uh, soap, shampoo, deodorant, you know, toothpaste, stuff like that. All the brand name, uh, you know, stuff you find at CVS, Walmart, Rite Aid, you know. J and J, Colgate, uh, P and G items, uh, Head and Shoulders, Dove, Unilever. So any any you know of those type of products we distribute, as well as some generic ones. But we really focus on the brand name stuff. Most of our accounts are using the brand name stuff. Now and then we talked about it. You've had this business for about eleven years. Like that. Uh, it's twelve years now. January of wow. twenty eleven is when I started it. Yeah, That's fantastic. Twenty three. So. so you, but you were working in a job beforehand. Like, tell us about the story about you know you you had a job and then you kind of just had, got fed up with it, or did you start it as a side hustle, or how did it evolve? No, it was actually I was three years before that I was working at a nursing home, uh, doing payroll and staffing in the in the business office. Um. And then a friend of mine had bought a business that was doing what I'm doing now. Uh, the person was retiring and there was a 27 year old company. And I don't know exactly cause I wasn't involved in it, but it was, seems like there was some mismanagement and within a few years, uh, the business just went bankrupt. So at that point I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the sales game. I enjoyed, you know, the people and meeting people and, uh, you know, some of the traveling and stuff that we were doing, you know, for trade shows and stuff. So I saved what I could. Um, I opened up with some of the vendors that were willing to open me up, uh, found some wholesalers and I uh, just uh, started on my own. So, yeah, it was a bit scary at that point. You talk about facing your fears of, you know, we I just bought a new house then with my, uh, you know, first wife. Uh, we had just moved to a bigger house. Uh, we had another, uh, our third child at that point um and we needed a bigger space we bought a bigger house a larger mortgage and stuff and uh that's when i saw all the writing on the wall in the old business and i'm like i need to do something um and then you know i was looking around i had some interviews and then i was like you know what if it's really going under let me just you know do what i can to save it on my own and 
I had offered to buy out the business with a partner, but he didn't want, he thought he can, you know, fix everything there and didn't want to show the real numbers and stuff. Um, so I ended up uh, just starting on my own, but it was a uh, scary, you know, making the mortgage every month in the beginning to, you know, finding a warehouse space and uh, getting the vendors to open and getting capital. And it was a, uh, you know, stressful, stressful uh, time to start it up. So you had a family as well and you had to take care of them and uh, you had to make uh, payments, yep. uh, mortgage payments and, you know, trying to figure out how to open a business and getting the capital, like you said. So there's, there's a huge pressure on, on you. <laughs> uh, and then you, you had your business up and running. When did the divorce happen? Um, divorce happened three years later, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a similar thing that happened to me. I, I, we opened the business, and, yeah, I think about eh, three years later, started going downhill, and, um, you know, uh, it, it's just something that causes a lot of, uh, of pressure on a family, uh, especially financial pressure. Um, and then, you know, it, but if two partners don't see eye to eye or understand that, you know, opening a business is, is not a it's not a cakewalk, <laughs> it's something that... Uh, it causes a lot of, uh, it's just a lot of effort and commitment, you know? Um, so, uh, especially if you have kids involved, it kind of throws a whole bunch, a whole bunch of, uh, other wrenches in the machine, um, that you have to keep going. But, uh, uh, you, you did, uh, you know, you kept the, um, you kept the business going. Who do you distribute to now? Like what kind of stores do you do like the wall, uh, uh, no, we really def uh, focus on um, uh, government accounts and uh, wholesale. Oh, okay. So you provide them. Okay, so you sell to the wholesalers and, and government accounts. All right, cool. But you made a business out of it. It's moving along, uh, which is great. Um but that's, um, yeah, opening a business and having, um, you know, the, the responsibility of being a dad and a business owner, it's not easy, uh, but it's something that you have to, you know, kind of work very hard towards and make sure the kids are happy. And, you know, if you have an ex-spouse, right. make sure that they're taken care of, you know, uh, you want, you want to make sure you provide an environment for your kids that, um. Is very important, you know. It's very uh, as as stable as possible, right? One hundred percent, yeah. As stable as possible, yeah. So, all right. So we're and then also we're uh, planning some. We got to plan some events. We'll talk after this uh, podcast here to see if we can put some stuff together. But um, you know, we met um, we met at another event in Long Island, Jessica Dennehy's event. She's having tomorrow yeah. night. Another one She's tomorrow night. Yeah, I'll probably be out there as well. I'll make the trip out. Um, it depends on, you know, the traffic, <laughs> you know, sometimes you got to leave like really early to get there and then kind of work from there and then go to the event. But, uh, like, like mileage wise, it's not really a far distance, but when you know, mileage wise, it's, it's, you know, 25, 30 miles uh, t time wise in traffic at that time of the day, <laughs> close, close to two hours last time. When I you, went. yeah. When you throw bridges and, uh, the BQE or the bell parkway into it, cross, and, cross and then, bunks and yeah. And yeah. long Island Short parkways. Bunch, yeah. Cross it, bunk, yep. Cross Island. Yep. Exactly. It's, it gets crazy. So, all right. So Aaron, um, yeah, I appreciate having you on going through your journey and your story. Um, you know, if you have any uh, advice for, you know, dads or uh, individuals who are starting businesses, I mean, what, what would you uh, kind of, what kind of advice would you give to them just as parting? Um, it's really, really important for, you know, to put the kids first. If you want to have healthy, well-adjusted kids, um, like, yes, you're going to have to put your grievances aside and just deal with it, as they say, because, you know, you were a active part of creating that kid and that kid, whether it's a he or a she needs you growing up and you need to be part of its life. Um, and this goes for both, you know, the mom and the dad, you know, suck it up and be there for your kid. And if that means putting aside your, you know, hate or dislike or whatever term you want to use for your spouse or your ex-spouse, Put it aside because your kids need you. 
Absolutely. And blame as well. Don't blame the other spouse, you know, take ownership of what you have created and what you've done and, you know, try to make, give your kids the best life that they can possibly have, you know, given the situation. So that's great advice. All right, Aaron, I appreciate you being on. Thanks for uh, taking the time out for us today. And uh, if anybody wants to got anything out of this podcast, you know, somebody that could use it, please share it with them. Uh, give, give us a rating and review and, um, you know, uh, and if anybody needs, you can always reach out and I'm happy to talk to you about divorce and parenting. Where, where can they reach you if they want to get a hold of you? Um, they can find me on Facebook, I guess. And then we can connect from there. Um, Aaron younger on Facebook and, you know, DM me and we'll set up a time to call. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm available as well. So both between the both of us, I think you can sort yeah, out. Your, we got our <laughs> you got any yeah. issues. <laughs> We'll sort you out, you know, Michael at crushingyourfear.com. Check out crushingyourfear.com. Uh, um, I'm on Instagram uh, at the real Michael Power and on Facebook as well, Michael Power. So, hey, Adam, uh, Aaron, thank you again for uh, jumping on with us today. I appreciate it. My pleasure. 